But let's get a move on and find out what the outlook is when it comes to health insurance, the premium collections, as well as the impact of the new IRDAI norms. Tapan uh, Singhal is the managing director at Bajaj Alliance General Insurance, joining in to fill us in on that and lots more. Good to have you on board. To begin with, Mr. Singhal, the lockdown has been eased. How have premium collections fared so far? Because they were impacted, of course, on account of the lockdown. So what have been the trends that now you're seeing with the unlock as well as the outlook on the general insurance space? If I look at it, in the month of April, um, the overall the industry premium collection, if you look at it, it will be down by about 15-20% now. But uh, if I look at line of business wise, uh, motor was down by close to half. Uh, health was minus three, which is very surprising. And I want to talk about it a bit more as I uh, progress, but fire was positive. So if I look at it overall, I think for the industry, a motor was down simply because one, no sales was happening, new vehicles. Two, people were not taking their uh, vehicle out and there was deferment which was there, no? But my surprise was on the health premium, retail health premium, no? Because if I see with COVID around and Indian insurance company covering COVID in the health policy, I, I was expecting that the retail health policy should uh, be moving up because that is a very good policy for the price is offered. But look at the average cost of COVID treatment, which is coming in about one and a half lakh rupees. And somewhere it's going to five lakhs to eight lakh rupees. So it, it's an expensive treatment. And uh, with the Indian insurance companies off, offering COVID as part of their regular health product, and people who have it also have this COVID cover. Why would people not buy it is one question I've told my team and asked my team to start talking to customers. Because predominantly, if I look at customers, should buy a good health cover right now. This is the right time for them uh, with uh, what is happening. But motor, if I look into the month of May, has picked up. So the deficiency, which is minus 50, has moved up to now minus uh, uh, 30 or so. And I also look at uh, sales and motor side picking up. And our expectation in June and July, motor will also pick up. So fundamentally, if I look at the GI business, the interesting part is uh, it, it is not a new business uh, which they cover, but they're covering existing business also. So if I look at motor sales, even it was, let's say, 70% down or 80% down in the month of April, you're talking of an 8% portfolio for the entire industry, and that down by 80% means about 5% down. So overall, I don't see a major impact uh, for the industry in terms of degrowth, uh, maybe 5-10% in uh, the worst case scenario, or the industry may actually come out uh, positive by the time the year ends. That is how I, I look at it. Moving on, then the IRDAI has withdrawn the long-term package third party and own and own damage policy uh, insured cars for three years and two wheelers for five years. Uh, given that motor insurance accounts for over 40% of the general insurer's business, what is going to be the impact on your sector? Yeah, first of all, why did IRDA do that? It was also critical to put the right perspective. No, no, they're not withdrawn the long-term uh, third party. All they have withdrawn or said is that the long-term comprehensive cover, you know, is what they said uh, should not uh, be there. And they're offering now one year OD plus the long-term TP. So the TP long-term has not been withdrawn. So the comprehensive cover, in a way, if you look at, let's say, let's break the two up, the own damage and the TP. Then TP, the servicing is actually uh, to the claimant directly via the ports. You know? So the customer, he gets service when an own damage claim happens. Now in locking the customer in for let's say five years or three years and he's not happy with the servicing he's getting from the existing insurance company and he has to and uh, he wants to move out, it was like a complete uh, locking the customer up. So from a pure customer perspective, it was not a good experience. So I think the regulator has done a good thing by freeing it up. So the customer now every year can decide uh, basis of the services registered from insurance company where to insure. So that's a very good thing. Now let's look at the impact to the industry. So overall, if you look at these long-term policies, it do not constitute more than 25-30% um, of the entire business of the industry. In the 30% also, we're not talking of that the third party has gone. That is there. So between third party and OD, if you look at the OD percentage, let's say if, if it is about, no, in the beginning, maybe 50-60% of it. Now that also, one-third or one-fifth is moving on. So if you break it all down, it is not such a significant impact, which is going to impact the industry from a premium perspective. From a customer perspective, it is a very good move uh, from the regulator. It gives customer choice and that I think should always be looked into. Right. Also wanted to understand, you know, given that motor insurance actually accounts for nearly 47 of your, 47% uh, rather, of your total products mix. Um, with IRDA deciding to, um, you know, decision coming in, do you now see it adversely impacting 
uh, the top line and also will it then narrow uh, the motor insurance sales going forward? So if I look at uh, my company, I think we have always um, believed that what is good for customer is good for um, the company. So as I said, we welcome this move, what the regulator has done, and I'm personally super excited about it. As a company, we have serviced the customer well. So why should my business get affected, you No, know, first and foremost? Second, it's also an opportunity as a good company that uh, people who may not be happy with existing company may shift to us. So why should I see a, a drop in the top line from my company's perspective? You no, know? If I serve the customer well, my intentions are um, good, and if the customer uh, sees value in what we offer, our top line should actually move up, no? Uh, you know, at the start, you were mentioning about health insurance. Looking at COVID-19 and the spread of the pandemic now, do you see um, growing importance of health insurance with people actively now opting for it? Uh, what exactly is your outlook and how big a segment this is going to turn out to be? That is exactly what I mentioned in the beginning also. Uh, if I look at April, uh, growth for retail is minus 3% industry. You know? Though as a company, we were like uh, close to 10% growth. That's a different story. Now, if COVID is on and insurance companies have COVID cover in their uh, policies, and I was telling my people, why are the servers not crashing? And the pricing is reasonable. If I look at a good health cover, it will cost you about 6,000 rupees in a year uh, for the entire year, and, and you are very well covered. So that is something that is very surprising. But then it comes back to my uh, statement, which I have made uh, many times. That insurance is a conversational thing, and I always say that if you have a conversation and understand the importance of having a good cover, then you can get treatment from the best hospital by the best doctor, which will actually make a difference between your life and death and for the dignity of your life. Why do you not pay six hundred thousand rupees for a year to get yourself a good cover? No, that is what it is. So it's a conversational sale. I feel the industry has to have more conversation. The industry has to reach out to more customers. But the industry has to do this duty. But in today's time, and I and I've said this to my people and I mentioned a lot of my interviews also, it's our duty to ensure that maximum number of people are covered under health insurance because COVID spreading and the cost of treatment being pretty high and if people have good cover, it will make a difference to them for the life and death and that uh, as industry is a duty. So if I look at the month of May, it has started moving a bit but not to the level that I feel it should move up but let's see how June and July and August moves up. So do you think customers currently are trying to conserve cash and also um, you know, deferment of those renewal premiums will actually somewhere lead to loss of customers and business. Is that what you see happening? And have you revised the growth estimates for FY21? So first, uh, look at conserving cash. Uh, 7,000 rupees in a year, you conserve it. Uh, and if, if you have to spend 5 lakh rupees for COVID, do you think it's a good move to conserve cash? I don't think so. So I don't think that is the reason. The reason is simply because the industry we have not been able to reach out to customers, have conversation, have been able to you know, talk to the importance of this cover which is required, and that is the industry we should push. Conserving cash about five thousand rupees for a year, I don't think is a big amount of conserving that we're talking about. The second point, which I, uh, if I uh, look at the deferment of uh, policy, now what exactly was the deferment of the policy? It just said that if you are not able to pay your renewal. So, whenever you uh, the lockdown or the period at which it was mentioned, when it opens up, you can pay the premium from the date in which your policy had expired. No, the deferment was not that the policy had extended. It just said that you can pay the premium the day the policy had expired. The benefits would continue, and the continuity benefit would be given to you. That is what the deferment policy said. Now, if you look at this uh, policy of deferment, why would it be that no? You would lose on a premium and the customer, whenever he or she renews within the time frame given, his policy would get renewed for the time the policy had expired in the past, which means the full premium starts uh, coming. Uh, but more than that, I think uh, as a company, we launched uh, pay as you go because we need the customer may not be using the vehicle full time. So he can buy the number of um, kilometers that he would think that he's going to move his vehicle. I think that is the kind of solution which companies have to come out with. There's also a later policy for customers who feel that the vehicle will not leave the garage. They should take those ex uh, uh, extensions in terms of the laid up uh, vehicle or they should look at you know, buying number of kilometers in these times. That is what you know, the customer should be looking at. Okay. Now, the growth in the general insurance industry is directly linked with economic growth. We know that. Now, with growth dropping significantly, what does this then imply uh, for the industry and for your business? So if you look at the last year performance of the industry, uh, I think for the first time after quite some time, it hit a single digit growth. 
and that was uh, covid had started with the end of the year no so it is not that it was a covid impact the economy as such was uh, going through a slow phase and the gi industry had grown about 9% as i mentioned the beginning of my talk also if i look at currently the overall gi industry is minus 10 when you have to speak uh, you know this two months where the entire lockdown is happening and the not so covid would be about what 6 7% maximum that would uh, be happening as you progress further no right so what then is your strategy post covid and you know what exactly are the segments that you and bajaj alliance are going to be focusing in on first and foremost no i think covid taught us uh, one important thing i think maybe i let's maybe say two important things uh, as a company we had been pushing digitalization and ease of uh, no customer servicing and a lot of time the pushback was that no um, the distributor not adopting it the customer not adopting it people are used to paper So in fact, when I was in Singapore uh, before this, I noticed that in a country like Singapore, which is so digitally savvy, 95% of uh, business in uh, insurance was still paper. So I was somewhere losing hope on this. But when COVID happened, overnight the shift to digitalization was amazing. I I think we issued close to 30 lakh policies in the lockdown period. We settled close to 15, 16 lakh claims, all digitally. It was phenomenal, completely paperless, and I was so very, very impressed. So post COVID, we asked one of my strategies that can we Uh, continue this digital um, move which has happened. Now, can we uh, see that the customer behavior has it um, changed? Has distributed change? But they must have seen huge convenience. Right? It's so easy now to get a uh, policy. It's so easy to get a claim. You just get down, click pictures, upload, and your money is getting transferred. You know. So I think behavioral change uh, would happen. So one, if you ask my strategy, is to see how can I make uh, the experience for my customer more frictionless, and how can digitalization be on the forefront now? Which I think the insurance industry, for uh, whatever reasons. Had not been to the level where it was. So that is a huge shift which I feel should happen. The second, the product. If you look at, let's say when I mentioned to you that uh, we got an approval from IID and the sandbox for pay as you go. Now those kind of products of motor will come. Why would somebody buy the full motor policy for the full year when he's going to drive only 50 kilometers in the entire year, 100 in the entire year? No, because the driving may uh, become less because of um, the now work from home and then roster happening and one third no staff going to office. With all this coming less, why would somebody pay the full premium? So products like this will emerge. Third, which is there, which again surprises me, as a company we have retained cyber cover. Cyber risk is so high. Now, when I speak to at least ten people, one of them already had a cyber attack. No, uh, the last I spoke to was CEO of a, 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 a colleague CEO who said one and a half lakh rupees from his account was transferred uh, in about two in the night. No, it was complete. So cyber attacks have become so common. So. I think policies like retail cyber policies like you no know, cyber cover for uh, the company liability claims will start uh, coming in. So those kind of uh, policies start happening. The industry has to come out with the new risk, uh, new covers. Uh, the pandemic cover now for business interruption, which you know people have been talking about. Those kind of covers have to start uh, coming in. So the new era, the learning that we had in the COVID, those has to materialize. And I'm very sure the company we obviously will uh, do it, and I hope the industry will also you know uh, pick up on these lines.